The next player of the Candidates Tournament 2024 that I want to talk about is Vidit. He qualified at the Candidates by winning the Grand Suisse and he's in a fantastic form in this year, winning a lot of competitions. I chose the game where he played against Vladimir Kramnik with white pieces. This game is actually very interesting. Uh, we did start it with d4. Kramnik responded with knight to f6. And after c4, e6, knight to c3. Kramnik responded with bishop to b4. And we have here Nimzo Indian defense and Vidit goes with f3. This is a sideline where he wants to occupy the center with e4. We know that it is crucial to control the center in chess because a strong center creates a space and all our pieces need to have some space to uh, move around on the board. So Black goes here d5, stopping e4 happening and Vidit here played a3. Asking the opponent, either you capture my knight on c3 or you have to go uh, back on e7. And Kramnik decided that it was better to capture the knight on c3 and double the pawns here. And next to play c5 to hit the center. You guys, this is all the theory and what goes here. C takes d5, e takes d5 and e3 to maintain the center. But what has to take care of the... Uh, king side pieces as you can see they are not developed and what has so far played by the pawns only uh, somehow uh, there is a need also to develop the pieces um, to make sure that the king will find this safety and will not stay here in the center Kramnik here decided to close the center and played c4 he wants to stop bishop going on d3 obviously and also he wants to start the queen side attack so here we did play knight to e2 he wants to play either knight to f4 or knight to g3 and then bishop to e2 otherwise if you play bishop e2 here in this position your knight will struggle to find the square because if you get the knight on h3 first of all who likes to play knight in the edge of the board no one this bishop is actually hitting on h3 square so maybe black will give up another bishop for the knight to destroy the pawn structure on the king side. Well, after knight to e2, now black went for knight to c6. And we did at this point decided that he wants to play more aggressive chess rather than to just develop the king side. And he went for g4. And he started the king side attack with this move. Kramnik here somehow ignored the attack and played knight to a5. He wanted to get this knight here on b3 to capture the dark square bishop. Uh, after bishop to uh, g2, that actually happened and we have knight on b3. Here we have the castle also uh, made by Kramnik and with it goes with castle as well. Black goes with b5 and starts the queen side attack. And at this point... Um, Vidit has to make decision how to proceed his attack on the king side. As he already castled, there is no rook on the h file. So h4, h5 will be a little bit maybe too much to start to open up the h file. But instead, he had a plan to open up the center and especially the bishop on g2 and he played e4. In fact, you guys, this is a pawn sacrifice. So uh, at this point, Kramnik captured the pawn on e4 and after f takes c4 knight took the bishop on uh, c1 if you don't capture this bishop on c1 this bishop can get a really strong piece bishop to g5 pinning the knight here something really bad can happen in this position so kramnik decided to capture the vidis bishop on c1 and then to just to capture the pawn on g4 it is indeed very interesting approach to give up the g pawn but to get the very strong center the moment these pawns will roll uh, on the other side of the board Vidit will have actually very strong initiative for the pawn so let's see knight to f4 this knight was hanging we have rook to b8 in fact the threat was e5 to attack the knight and the rook we have rook to b8 and h3 this bishop goes back on d7 it's a little bit passive move uh, here but where else to bring this bishop and now we have e5 hitting the knight knight uh, has to also go back and as you can see now white's pieces are going into the other side of the board and black has to go all these pieces passive queen to a3 this queen is now going to the king side we have rook to b6 
uh, Kramnik wanted to have this rook on the sixth rank in defense. Uh, anyway, d5 has happened. White is now uh, controlling a lot of squares in the center. We do have here d6 hitting the knight. Knight goes on e6, and uh, by the move d6, we actually free the square here for the knight. Knight goes d5, hitting the rook, and also this knight will create some serious uh, attack threats on the king side with knight 2 e7 or knight to f6 here black has to watch out those two knight moves rook to a6 has been played rook to f5 has been played by vidid and this is actually a fantastic move he doesn't really care about the fact that he moved the rook on this diagonal but his idea is to double the rooks on f file and then to play knight to e7 and win this pawn on f7 Kramnik went for queen to h4, looking for some activity on the king side, but it's not really stopping with it to play rook to f1, hitting on f7, and after rook to a3, this is basically, you know you are lost, but let's take another pawn situation, because knight to e7 and rook to f7 is so serious move, and I kind of have a feeling that this rook is much better to be on b8 or d8 somewhere on the back rank to at least guard the king here kramnik decided to trade the rooks and to play queen to uh, h5 to attack the rook and perhaps to look for some sort of checks on the back rank the final move that we did played is queen to f4 and it is a fantastic move it's a queen sacrifice if you take this queen then there is a checkmate on the back rank uh, what else to do here with black because the threat is rook to f8 if you give a check on the back rank then the king goes on h2 and this king is actually safe there is no more check uh, and here you cannot do really much about the position if you play h6 here and give the space to the king i have still rook to f8 and then checkmate next move on g8 so basically black's king never had a chance to survive ever since white started the attack on the king side and i believe that this is very powerful play by vidit he's a very solid player he's very sharp and attacking player so i think he is one of the uh favorites at the candidates tournament guys thank you very much for watching this video i'll see you in the next one bye